Hey, my friends, welcome back. You're not going to believe this. We're starting a brand new series today. That series is going to be over thermodynamics. A lot of you have been asking me for this. And so this semester, it's my goal to complete the whole course on thermodynamics. So if you're taking this, you can follow along with these videos and hopefully this will help you be successful in your thermodynamics class. So I'll be working lots of examples. Be sure and subscribe to the channel. And as I add new videos to this series, you'll see them come up. So click the notification bell and you'll see these uh, pop up as, long, as well as when I add other courses like fluids, I need to finish dynamics and, and any, anything else, material science that I have planned to do. And so right now I want to bring to you an intro to thermodynamics. So let's talk about thermodynamics. Let's talk about the word thermodynamics. Where does that come from? The uh, Latin comes from, here's, there's therm and there's dynamis, okay? And therm is what, uh, uh, Latin for heat, and dynamis is force. So really thermal, thermodynamics is the ability uh, for, that, for that heat uh, to do work. And, but our definition that we can use is, is this really kind of, is a study of system through which matter flows. So either it flows in and out of that system or it's contained within that system, but we're gonna study that matter in, or that mass and how it flows to that system or how it doesn't or how, how the properties of that material change uh, in those systems, okay? So uh, what are some thermodynamic systems? Some examples of systems, when we say, how, do they, how, how does it uh, flow through a system? What is a system? Well, a system can be any, the body that you want to study, okay? So uh, we're going to look at systems and how they interact with the properties of that material that's going through the, through the system. Um, and then uh, how they act with their surroundings. So this, here's an example, is a human heart. That would be a system. The surroundings is anything outside of that system. So the system itself could just be, we could just draw a dashed line around here. And that's the system. Anything outside of that is surroundings, right? Now this system is gonna have things flowing in and out of it, as you know. Uh, another system we could talk about is a refrigerator. Now that's a closed system in it. Nothing flows in and out of there except cheese and Dr. Pepper, but that doesn't count. Uh, we, we're gonna talk about a closed door refrigerator there. That would be a, a, a system. And so the boundary around that system would be, you know, in 3D space there. Uh, the whole system there that's the boundary around it or an engine right so a lot of things happen in the engine you've got air coming in you got fuel coming in you got heat going out you got exhaust gas going out so this this whole entire engine can be a system and then again that can go all the way up to a power plant a whole entire power plant i didn't draw a whole power plant because that's way too hard that whole entire power plant can be a system okay we can look at what comes into that power plant and what goes out right so you've got natural gas and electricity and steam or whatever coming in and you've got electricity or whatever going out. So, so there's two types of systems. Okay. So this is kind of by definition here, there's two types of system. Number one, there's an open system and number two, there's a closed system. Okay. Now an open system would be one that, uh, did I write that exactly backwards? I wrote that exactly backwards. Duh. Sorry. How about that? Huh, that didn't make any sense. You were like, what? A closed system. There's no transfer of mass across a boundary. So like, here's a piston, right? So as this piston changes, uh, it might go up or down. That The mass inside of that, that control volume there in that isolated system doesn't change, right? The mass stays the same. It's just being compressed, right? So what, what might change inside of that system? Well, as that changed, the volume is going to change. We can put a little line through it for the specific volume. Um, the temperature might change. As I compress it, the temperature might increase. The, the pressure is definitely going to change, but the mass is not going to change. It's going to stay the same, right? So the mass is going to be constant. Well, what about through this, through, through a heart or through, well, let's say a heart. That would be an open system. Mass may flow through in the form of blood or oxygen, right? Coming in, going out. There's, there's a, a constant cycle of, um, 
mass coming in and out of that system. So that would be an open system. This would be an open system. This would be a closed system. This would be an open system, a power plant. Things flow into it, things flow out of it, right? So you need to be able to identify those. So a closed system we call an isolated system, right? That's an isolated system. This is an isolated system. These, we have something called a control volume, and the control volume is nothing more than that, the area inside of that boundary, uh, what's, what's happening there. And, and the boundary is another kind of definition that we need to know. The boundary is that surrounding the dash line that I drew around that system. It separates the system from the surroundings, okay? That's all you need to know. For this one, the boundary would be this space here, right? It separates the system from the surroundings. That's what the boundary is. So in thermodynamics, every problem you need to start off, and we're gonna do this over and over and over, but every problem you need to start up by setting it up and knowing something about the problem. So you need to identify what the problem is. What kind of system do we have? Do we have an open system or closed system, right? And that's gonna tell me something about that system. And then from that system, we need to know about the properties. What, what's the volume? What's the temperature? What's, and then once we have all those kind of knowns identified, then we can go attack the problem. So I hope this piques your interest. I hope this is a, this is something that you're looking forward to. Follow along with me. Be sure and subscribe to the channel and, uh, and uh, click the bell so you're notified when these new videos come out. But I hope to be putting one of these out about every two or three days. So follow along and let's all make an A in thermodynamics. We'll see you next time.